All right, everyone. I want to welcome you. This is our ninth and very final panel discussion uh, of Student Symposium 2020, and we've saved a really good one for last. Um, we've got Veronica Sandoval, but before I officially introduce Veronica, I'm going to make a few announcements. I want to remind everybody that we posted today the link to the Virgin Hotel Dallas guided video tour. It's a really great tour. It's told from a designer perspective. Um, so you get a lot of great detail, uh, which is wonderful. And then of course we still have, uh, we posted on November 4th, all of our architectural and design firm video tours. So be sure to take, check those out. If you haven't already, of course you can do that this weekend over a cup of coffee, but they're really, really good. Um, but um, really quickly, I want to just thank our sponsors, our VVIP, or the, it's the Dallas Design Community of the ASID Texas Chapter, our VIP or Fazy Rugs, and our event sponsors, Catherine Nelson Design, who's on us with right now, Clinton Chintz, that would be me, Sherman Williams, we've got Ashlyn Bork with us, our wonderful rep, Dallas Market Center, the Austin Design Community of the ASID Texas Chapter, Fiber Seal, The Botanical Mix, Little Weechi, Dallas Design District, Renee Design Solutions, and Design with Veronica Sanders. And Veronica Sanders is here. Thank you very much. And as a reminder, please do put your questions in the chat and we will address those at the end of Veronica's uh, presentation. But without further ado, I want to introduce Veronica. Veronica is a practicing registered interior designer for Wilson Associates here in Dallas. And during her three and a half years at Wilson, she's collaborated on numerous domestic and international luxury resort projects, such as the Ritz Carlton Reserve Dorado Beach in Puerto Rico and the Dong Shanghai High End Resort in Hudong, China. Prior to Wilson, Veronica worked at Forrest Perkins, which was acquired by Perkins Eastman, for four and a half years. She received her BS in interior design at Texas Christian University, where she also interned with the interior designers at the facilities planning department. Veronica is wrapping up her sixth year on the NEWH Dallas board, and she helped start a nonprofit called AACT this summer with 14 other TCU alumni to advocate for campuses of higher education to be more inclusive for students, faculty, and staff. Please take it away, Veronica. Thanks. Thanks everyone for being here on a Friday afternoon. Um, that's a little bit about me. Um, as Laura mentioned, I went to TCU. Um, I can't quite see which universities or or schools that you all are attending right now, but I'm sure that you are in the thick of um, final projects and all of that um, with it being November. So best of luck. <laughs> I remember those days. Um, I know that, you know, design school tends to be double or triple the work. Um, our class hours are longer than everybody else's projects, you can't just say, oh, well, that's enough studying and go to bed. So you either get them done or you don't. So um, I don't envy that process, although real world is very similar. And I do hope that you all are surviving the craziness that is end of the year projects. Um, with my journey, I've been in hospitality design now about eight years, um, going on nine. And I, as Laura mentioned, I started at Forrest Perkins and learned quite a bit from multiple um, mentors and designers and even just admin at the firm, um, including Deborah uh, Forrest herself. Um, I also was able to intern out in education. So public K through 12, along with higher education at TCU with the facility planning. So I definitely encourage multiple internships if you're able to in different fields to kind of get a taste for the different types of design. Um, and I say that because, you know, what you may envision your path to be 
and then getting into that field of design may not exactly be where your heart lies. And so there's so many different avenues with interior design, whether that's um, the, the fields that everyone thinks about like healthcare, commercial, hospitality, residential, but then there's also product design and set design and manufacturing, carpet design, fabric design. There's so many so many different avenues that you can take it. I mean, even on this call, we have Ashlyn with paint um, that that does, you know, different different types of paint. And there's so much more that goes into paint than some of us would even imagine at times, which is pretty cool. So uh, highly recommend multiple internships in different different places to kind of get a feel for what you're interested in. Um, uh, Laura had recommended that I also share some wisdom and knowledge, although I'm still learning. Um, there are a few tips that I always give any incoming interns that we have at Wilson or at Forrest Perkins. Since during the time um, at Forrest Perkins, I was able to hire for interns, um, which was a pretty cool experience. So some of the things that different firms look for are your role in projects. So I know a lot of times there's group projects and there's individual projects, but thinking about your role in that project and how to best illustrate that process. So not just the final product, but did you do hand sketches before you got to the final design that you made in either Revit, AutoCAD or SketchUp? Um, you know, some of those initial schematic boards, things like that I think are very vital. So not just finished product, but also the process and showing your work on how you got there. Um, when interning, my top three are write everything down, ask questions, and always pull more options. So if someone tells you I need three tile options, pull 12, and then they can narrow it down to three. Um, if they need a blue vinyl fabric, you know, pull a ton, and then they can weed out. So. Um, write everything down, ask questions, and pull tons of options. So um, I think the only other thing that I have high recommendations on is right after school, keep studying. Um, the NCIDQ is not an easy feat. And the longer you are out of school, the harder it is to get back into study mode. So uh, you only need to be out of school and working a year and a half before you can sit for the test but that doesn't mean you have to wait a year and a half to study for the test. So I know that sounds terrible. You finally are done with school and then getting back to studying, but um, it is the easiest way to advance um, and get more pay, promotions and things like that for, for all of that. And there are great um, different online courses that you can take such as through ASID or other organizations and even keep practice. Um, so I think that's it about me for background. So it looks like I see, ooh, lots of different schools in the chat, which is great. We got some North Texas, some Baylor, Texas State, um, Dallas College. So welcome all. I love it. I love it. Lots of, oh, even some TCU love. So everyone, so welcome to have you today. I am going to share my screen and turn off the video while we go through that, tends to have better resolution when I turn off my video. So share screen. Okay, so I am, can every just to check in, can someone do a yes or a thumbs up in the chat if you can see my screen? Anyone? Okay. Hopefully, I think it's there. Um, so this was one of the projects I got to work on at Forest Perkins, the Fairmont DC. Um, and it involved a lot of custom things. So this image in particular is the bar area right when you walk in. So the entrance off of the Port Cashier where you drive your car is from here. And you just get to see this expansive sunken bar. The really cool thing about this is it had a great budget, which not all projects do for the lobby and the um, ballrooms. But um, with that, we also had a great team. So not just design wise, but great 
partnerships with the construction team and with architecture. Um, one of the biggest challenges in this space was the fixture that you see above. Um, and I'm gonna change to an up close image of this. Um, these are about 1200 different shapes. Some of them are in different finishes. I think we repeated about eight to 12 shapes uh, and in, in three different finishes. And it was 1200 pieces that hung at different suspended heights, which is a huge feat, um, but I'm gonna get to an up close image of it. Oh. So with this, this is a lot of punctures in the ceiling and with that, we needed to make sure that structural integrity was not going to be compromised with all of these shapes and supports. So with the help of lucive lighting, we were able to engineer this um, as this undulating wave in, in overlooking the whole bar. And it now becomes like a statement feature. It is above the bar along with a huge staircase. And then on the second floor, you can see it as this lovely lady is walking by. And with that, we needed to make sure that none of the shapes would fall down and hit anyone because they weighed more than they should. And um, so we wouldn't injure anyone, but also that if you were on the second floor, you couldn't reach out and just grab one. So a lot of engineering, which is crazy and math went into this, um, but I, I think it turned out really well. Um, same with the screen that's behind it. All of those are individual sample sizes from 3M that were grid in Excel and to start for the most opaque to the most translucent at the top. Um, another project that I was lucky to be a part of was the St. Anthony Hotel in San Antonio. It's a historic property downtown right around the corner from the Alamo. Um, and we were able to keep a lot of the historic architecture, but then bring a really cool modern twist to the property, bringing up that, that 20s glam, if you will. Um, lots of weddings and ballroom event spaces. So. The nice thing about hotel properties is that you're not just working with guest rooms. You also oftentimes get to do a lot of different types of designs. So whether that's food and beverage for restaurants or you get to do um, ballrooms like this for event spaces, lobbies, meeting spaces, fitness centers, spas. It really gives you a little bit of everything is what I like to say, which is really, really cool. Indoor, outdoor, pool areas, um, and even some of the offices for uh, back of house, people that work there, that kind of thing. So then switching, I'm gonna switch gears now. So I'm not sure if anybody has heard of the Hard Rock Hollywood Hotel. Um, it basically looks like a guitar and it was initially concepted with uh, an architecture firm and then put out as a competition. So with Wilson, Wilson ended up getting the interiors part of this project where we were able to collaborate on spa areas, guest rooms, public spaces. Make sure I am still sharing my screen. Um, so a lot of times before we even get to construction documents, the clients request renderings. So just like you would in school, we'll have different types of renderings, whether that's computer generated or hand sketched or watercolored. It just depends on what's in the contract. Um, but we'll put together different things of floor plans. I'm waiting for this to load because it's a very large file. <laughs> floor plans for the spa. Uh, finish boards, just like you would do in in your regular presentations. And you'll see in some of these presentations, everybody does finish boards differently. Some take a picture and then superimpose furniture on top of it. Some arrange all the finishes and just Photoshop around it. Some do digital boards. So it really 
just depends on your client, your time frame. A lot of times people run out of time for the digital board or for a physical board. So they do a digital one or vice versa. So it just depends on what, what your client's desires or maybe even your project manager preferences. So with a lot of the Hard Rock Hollywood, the main theme for their for them is they wanted that resort life to be put into this into this property. So Hard Rock Hollywood is actually really close to Miami and but it's off it's about an hour or two north and they're not on the water. So they wanted to have this be a destination for people to come and still feel like they can get that Florida waterfront luxury experience that you would get in Miami Beach. So with the property, they created pools in some of the penthouse suites and lagoons for miles around the property. So it really created this huge vibe. Um, I can go back to this for for these cabanas. They even have rooms that are specifically in the lagoon with swim up cabanas. Let's see if I can go to that page, which is really cool. Yeah, the Oasis Tower, and they have hotel rooms that just align all along, basically like a lazy river, if you will. Um, in the hotel. And then I see there's a question. Yes, this is in Hollywood, Florida. So Hard Rock Hollywood. Um, their Instagram is fabulous. If you ever want to follow it, it's like the new hot property. Uh, it is also owned by the Seminole tribe in Florida. They're an indigenous tribe that is um, just phenomenal with a lot of the things that they do. And so uh, it was really cool for different, especially like coworkers that I worked on with this to get to interact with clients and see what their preferences are. You get some clients where they'll, say, they'll see something like this and say, I hate orange. You're like, okay, we'll redesign. Um, there's certain things and quirks that you'll find as you start interning and working that are, are pet peeves that clients have, but until they see it, they don't know to share it, which is fun. So this is one of the suite plans that has a jacuzzi and a pool in it. And I wanna say this one's located on like the 32nd or 36th floor of the guitar portion of the hotel. Um, the other challenge on this property is that because of the shape of the guitar, there are no straight windows <laughs> anywhere on the property. So if I were to go back to the guitar tower, all of these rooms, some of the, the glass curves inward, some of the glass curves outward. So a lot of the rooms we had to do specialized window treatment to where it was a roller shade that was at an angle that went along a track at each of these, these windows. So super cool concept, still making so much buzz of architecture, but as interior designers, it definitely makes our job a little bit more difficult <laughs> when spec writing for window treatment. Um, so this is just another version of a digital board. This is a little more FF&E related and focused, but, um, and then same with the, the palette. This is just taking a photo. So like I said, there's so many different ways of doing material boards. Some people make the poofs and the pillows and mount it to a frame. Others do loose lay like this when you're in a more schematic phase. Um, but it's really great to see how it, it comes together in rendering form and then physically. Any questions thus far? I'm trying to monitor the chat as best I can. Ah, what's FF and E? It's a great question. <laughs> um, furniture, fixtures, and equipment generally. There are some discrepancies on what FF and E actually stands for. Um, some people have different interpretations. 
um, or it's been detailed different ways, but from the majority of what I've heard and from my project managers or bosses or mentors, it's furniture, finishes and, and equipment. And then how many interior designers worked on this project? Cool, okay, so Hard Rock Hollywood has been going on for probably about eight years and the architect started it before us. So with that, um, you'll find that in any firm, some people end up moving, leaving, changing careers, getting promoted, new people come in. So this project probably touched about 30 different hands. We like to joke that every single person in the office worked on this project. Um, so one of my coworkers has actually been on it since the inception um, and she's about to hit her seventh or eighth year. So yeah, and then rendering software. Um, some of these are hand-drawn and then professionally colored. So a lot of renderings are being done overseas now because um, the capabilities that they have and the ability to for us as designers to work and pick finishes and furniture and lay out the space and then hand that off to someone else to work while we're sleeping, it starts to create this 24 hour cycle of always having someone on the clock working on the project to help with efficiency. So these are done in a combination of SketchUp um, and hand Photoshop along with hand sketches. So, and even when we get in the final graphic, if you will, of the rendering, um, we'll ask the renderers to submit a Photoshop file, which I should have had an example of this, but basically what they do is they color every single layer a different color. And so you could, and it, it's um, similar, I'm gonna do a really terrible drawing here, but basically you could use the eyedropper tool and pick a color and then change it or adjust it if you needed to. Um, and so the whole thing looks almost like a heat map, but of color. And uh, it's it makes it very easy that if the day of that you're supposed to put it in the presentation, you need to tweak a pillow to be more blue or green or red or have a little bit of sheen, um, you're able to make quick edits at the end. Ah, good question. So for this project, um, my responsibilities were more of execution. And so when you have design presentations that are more schematic or concepting, um, where things haven't been, I'm trying to find an image, when things haven't been decided on, like you haven't picked an actual furniture piece, it's more conceptual. Um, I came into this project since it's already had been running where they had already finished the guest rooms and they were starting the suites. So we had two people that were working on scheming all of the different suites. And then from there, from, you know, say the 10 or 15 suites that were the premier luxury suites, each one had its own, like maybe suite A had bronze metal, but suite B had chrome. And maybe this one was more greens and blues, but another one was more reds and pinks. So what my job was just to come in value engineer into the client's budget. A lot of those concepts, finishes, materials, and execute the design um, aesthetic. So that may mean pulling new fabrics or pulling new furniture or designing the furniture so that it was more cost-effective. Um, so I was handed a few suites, premier suites, and told, okay, now execute this. So there's a lot of calling vendors and working through shop drawings and specifying and, and doing line drawings in CAD, Photoshopping elevations, um, similar to something like this. Um, maybe even tweaking reflections on here once we got the rendering back, things like that. Um, with design, you don't only have execution though. So one part project that I was really lucky to work on from the beginning of the renovation was Ritz Dorado Beach. It's a Ritz Carlton Reserve. There's only three in the world right now. And I just found out last month that they're working on a fourth. So there's Ritz Carlton. And then one level above that is their reserve properties. And generally they're very immersive 
into whatever setting they're in. So one of the locations is in Bali. Um, this one that I got to work on is in Puerto Rico. And with Ritz Carlton and Marriott, um, we have a very strict style of how they like presentations to be brought on. So one of those things that they are very heavy on with Marriott and Ritz Carlton is the social, historical, and locational um, aspects of design. So with that, a lot of times some people refer to locational as geographical. Um, social may be more of what the people are kind of represent now, um, and then historical would be anything history related. So with that, we broke that up into our different sections. One of them was for this property was how the social interaction happened on this property. It's on acres and acres of land that's preserved and protected, um, but it brought so many people together in so many different ways. Um, another aspect that's very common in multiple different areas is the indigenous population. And the indigenous population in this part of Puerto Rico um, was a tribe that was the Taino tribe. And so we took a lot of inspiration from their initial drawings and artwork, pottery, that kind of thing. And then lastly, just the geographical colors and, and map of, of where it is. So um, they're very heavy in storytelling. And then from that storytelling, they use that to infuse in the entire guest experience. So with hospitality, a lot of times, it's not just the glitz and glamor. It's also how all of their staff interacts with guests. That may be someone as, um, that you may not think about like a, a bellman all the way to um, the concierge. Like maybe there's specific concierge for certain people, but with, with even just like the chefs and the housekeeping, anybody that would interact with anyone on the property is kind of given this story narrative on how they want all of the guests to feel when they come to this property. Um, is that that they want to feel isolated from the digital world to this kind of paradise? Is it that they want to um, be seen in the glam life, kind of like Hard Rock Hollywood, that kind of narrative story of whatever drives the, the vision of the property is, is really something Marriott and Ritz Carlton like to to dig really deep into. So from that, we pull a lot of different furniture and finishes. Um, this was a soft good renovation because I'm not sure how many of you remember, but a few years ago, they had a bunch of terrible hurricanes that wiped out a lot of the property and they didn't necessarily flatten them like a tornado, but the damage was just enough that they couldn't have people stay because the power was out. And so all of these rooms with maybe doors that were off kilter or windows that were cracked open were in the humid, hot air for months unattended. And so mold just grows. So basically we came in and to keep the integrity of the initial design, um, which was also designed by Wilson and my project manager like 15 years ago. And the same lead designer was on it along with me, which is really cool to be in the, the original team for the renovation, um, we tried to keep in line that story that was created. So it definitely comes in through the fabrics and the finishes and the carpet. Um, and then this is another example of a, a digital board versus a physical board. Um, we generally will send the physical samples to the client because sometimes the finishes don't read well on screen, depending on what colors they are. But at least this is a way for them to get a a first step representation before the, the snail meal gets there, if you will. So, and then this is just an image of the original install. Um, I see another question. Ooh, when selecting furniture for a large project, do you try to use the same furniture manufacturer as much as possible? 
Um, good question. So when it comes to properties for hotels, and I probably should have cleared this initially, most hotels don't go into production until they've done a model room. So different from other types of projects like healthcare or, um, well, they might do it in healthcare too, but education or office design, you generally will have a model room or a couple model rooms. So before the client has to buy 300 beds and 300 desk chairs, they do one or two model rooms. Maybe they do a, a king room and a double queen room, or they'll do a, a regular guest room and a suite and basically order everything that they've approved through the design process. So they can go in it, see the scale, feel, touch. I've even had clients wanna sleep in the room for a couple of days, um, test all the features, the faucets, the lights. Uh, and then they're like, well, actually I didn't like this handheld faucet as much as I think I did. I don't really feel like paying the thousand dollars extra each room or, so there's different things that they'll do test it and then purchase production. And with that, it is cheapest generally, or they get the best cost savings if they do all the case goods or all the upholstery from one manufacturer, all the lighting from one manufacturer. It also helps the manufacturer when they're using it for sales tools, they can show the room and say, we did all the lighting or we did all the fabrics. So we don't always do that, um, but we do try to do it when we can. Um, I also, have relationships with many different vendors. I try not to play favorites um, because a lot of people have a lot of different strengths. So just like that, all companies have different strengths. Some are better with metal work, some are better with big scale lighting, others are better with portable guest room lighting. So it just really depends uh, on the project and the situation and how um, everything plays out. I think it's definitely easiest when you have one or two or three vendors per type of product, because then you can get all of your finishes to align because they're coming from the same place. But really good question. Let's see. <laughs> oh my gosh, lots of questions. I love this. Um, do you do any traveling for the project or is all virtual? So before the pandemic, yes. Um, I had the pleasure of going, I think my last most um, exotic place that I went to was Aruba. So we were working on the Ritz Carlton in Aruba a year or two ago. So I got to go there. Um, I think I spent an hour at the pool and I went swimming in the ocean for like an hour one day. Otherwise, I was locked in a corridor doing field dimensions and taking pictures of everything in the guest room. So traveling for hospitality sounds glamorous, but it is a lot of indoors, um, unless, unless you're like a reef or um, purposing like the facade of the building. It's a lot of indoor air <laughs> circulation and measurements and photos and just meetings, which is really sad. Um, but it is really cool to get to go to different places and even see it for a little bit. I, um, I stayed an extra day when I was there to, I basically had my own tour guide take me around the city and show me some of their historic buildings for inspiration. Um, and tell me about the history. So I think that was really cool. I, although it was still work, it's it's really neat to get a local's perspective on all of that. Um, so, and then let's see, especially since you mentioned the importance of pulling more options on the job, I would love to know how much editing went into this project. Did any collaborators disagree on the story of the space? So thankfully the story was already tightened up years ago um, when they initially did it. It was more just reminding maybe any new people in Marriott that hadn't been familiar with the property and filling them in. Because a lot of times when we're designing, we're not just designing for the client. If they're a branded property, we're also designing for the brand. And so there are certain requirements that brands put on hotel owners so that they're allowed to say, this is a Ritz-Carlton reserve. And so with that, it doesn't mean that they have all say in the design part, but they have more say in kind of operationally of what that entails, what requirements like double rub um, amounts on fabrics or 
you know, the lacquer or the wood finishing, like what the durability of that needs to be. So um, with the storytelling, there's definitely times when people butt heads where people say, I don't think this really relates to the story. Um, for the Aruba property in particular that we were working on, um, the brand was very particular about how the layout of the presentation went. And the client actually stood up for us as the designers and was like, we want our designers to design. We don't need them to waste time fixing the presentation 12 million times just so it gets perfect for you all. Like we're, it's not going to the general public. So like this presentation in general isn't, isn't gonna be mass produced for people to see when they enter the space and like read about it. Um, so there's no reason for me to spend hours and hours of client money time redoing the presentation so that the layout is exactly what Mara wants. We definitely can fit into certain regulations that they ask for, but um, it was cool to see the client kind of stand up to the brand in a way that was kind, but also firm. <laughs> so uh, there, are, there are some people that butt heads, even clients in general that are partners will disagree sometimes. So, um, and then the last project that I really, well, I guess I'll do a couple more. We have a few more minutes and then I'm gonna do questions. Um, it, this is the international project that Laura was mentioning. It's the Dongshanai Haiyan project in Pudong, China. It's eight towers and it's basically supposed to be another destination. So similar to Hard Rock Hollywood where it's this destination, this is pretty much in the middle of nowhere. There's this huge mountain in the background and the ocean, nothing for miles. Um, but they're trying to make it like a city center. So what you would think of like in Universal Studios where you have um, downtown Disney, but then you have the resorts and you have your, I think everything but your amusement park would be here. So um, it's a pretty massive space. And with that, each tower would have a separate identity. Uh, and it's, also taking that same lagoon concept going around the property. Um, so we were able to pick a lot of FF&E for them, furniture finishes, even sometimes equipment. So with equipment that comes into play sometimes in the guest rooms with like mini bars or safes or what type of hair dryer sometimes, although I, or like makeup mirror that you're using. So equipment, is loosely sometimes um, OSNE items, which means like operational equipment, uh, essentially. So we were able to put together this package. Um, I actually did this package uh, myself in a really short time frame. So, uh, and they ended up approving pretty much everything, which was amazing. And I think. It has been completed, but I don't have any photos of it yet because they only have one tower done of the eight. So, but two of my coworkers got to go last year, pre-pandemic to China, um, way before that. So they were safe, but um, I think I saw a couple other questions. Um, with the rounds of presentations, we do have a lot. I know someone asked about the, how many rounds it takes. Uh, it just depends on the client. We sometimes will do multiple rounds in one phase and other times the first round they'll just love. They'll make a few tweaks, but then they, they approve from concept to go to skip. Oh. So sorry, y'all. I think I my think internet went out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> apologies. <laughs> um, there was a question about rounds on presentations. And what I was gonna say about that is just, you have your phases like you learn in school where you have concepts, schematic, design development, uh, construction, documentation, and then construction administration. Concepts, schematic, and design development are very time intensive. Um, they are generally a lot of rounds. Uh, some clients approve concept really quickly, others linger in it a long time, um, but it all kind of shakes out the same way in the end. So some that are more into the design development they may not take as long in concept. So that it does take a while sometimes, but it 
is definitely worth it for the final execution. I do, um, one of the things that we did on this one, which you can see here, is because it's these, these levels of lagoons, we decided to kind of color code those as you were ombre closer to the beach. So the upper deck is the darkest and the middle deck goes to more of a cyan rich aqua and then the lower deck where there's kind of lost the, the private cabanas. Can you still see it or did you lose me? Yeah, I, I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Um, and then as you go closer to the beach with the private cabanas, it's more neutral. So that was pretty cool to do. Um, I did see another question about before it, my computer internet went out and Zoom decided to close uh, about sustainability. Uh, yes. Sustainability is a very tricky topic when it comes to hospitality. I think the easiest way it's going to be for hospitality to transition into that is for national or international legislation for it. Um, right now, there are a lot of products on the market that help with sustainability, but they're not always the most cost effective at the moment. And a lot of LEED and other sustainable programs are very time intensive in documentation, which if you're just specifying things that fill certain LEED requirements, that's great. But then all the documentation that is to make a building like LEED certified is what a lot of owners that I've experienced have shied away from because it adds to the designer fee, it adds to architectural fee, it adds to the time for the project in general, which adds fee. And so hospitality is probably one of the furthest behind, I would say, in sustainability focus. Um, there have been really cool firms and panels that I've been on, at, actually specifically with Metricon last year through, through ASID and IDA, where they were talking about um, each project, an initiative that their firm was doing where they would commit to doing 20 products to find the full information, almost like it was um, ingredients for a food type product that you would see, like a, a food label, um, and find out the entire process of it. So to make sure that it wasn't harmful in any step of the way of making that material or product. So um, 20 is not a lot when you look at some of these properties that we do for hospitality where there's hundreds and, and thousands of materials and products, but it's a start. Um, so there's, I mean, I wish we were more green friendly. I try to be more sustainable in my personal life because design is not as sustainable in my work life. Um, I think many designers will tell you the amount of paper alone that we use is atrocious. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's those progress prints of presentations like these, there's massive plans and sketches, and there's a lot that goes into design. And I don't think we're totally at a place where we can be all digital yet. Um, but it, it has been really cool this year to see how many firms have transitioned to work from home and being digital and how quickly they were able to do that. There's still some restraints with that, um, but it was it's a nice move forward. And hopefully, since not everyone has big plotters and printers at their house, it will make people be more intentional with what they print to save on sustainability in the workplace. Very good point. Well, we've, we've reached the end, I hate to say, <laughs> But that was really incredible. And I loved seeing all the properties, um, it, especially now when we haven't been going anywhere. <laughs> it's such, so I felt like a little vacation <laughs> to yeah. dream of being in those spaces. But no, Sorry thank you <laughs> for sharing all, all, all over the place. My mind is creative brain, I like to say, is very much not <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I know that these presentations are huge, so I'm sure there was a little bit of a delay on the pages, but. That's okay. Um, no, any no. other questions? I know we were kind of doing questions along the way. Anyone? I know we're a little bit over. Sorry, y'all. But that's okay. <laughs> no, it's worth it. Um, I guess the only other thing I would say is hospitality is amazing, but it's the 
probably the industry where you work the most overtime without pay for overtime. So oh, if this yeah. is something you are very interested in, which I was when I was in college and I tried to do internships and other things to make sure that, that is what I wanted to do. Um, just know that it is one of hospitality has the gruesomest hours. And depending on where you are wanting to design, whether it's staying in Texas or being in other cities, it's even worse. So like New York, LA, really rough hours. Um, so it's really fun. You get to do the best, the best, but um, just know that that is, there's a reason why a lot of people want to work at some of the places that are in hospitality. Um, so. <laughs> All right. Well, you go have fun on your vacation because <laughs> you're about to take off for your vacation. If you can send us the recording or send me the recording before yeah. you go, that would be awesome. I will. Um, but other than that, I want you to have a great time and relax and enjoy yourself. You deserve it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, best, guys. Best and of luck, everyone, with final projects. Yeah. Well, join us in 10 minutes for our awards presentation ceremony. I don't think it's going to take that long. Uh, we only had six categories. So um, hope to see you on there. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. Bye, Ron.